Hello again, it's Joe the CRM chap here with a new video in my series all about Microsoft Exam PL400. This is the developer's exam for those looking to validate their skills building technical solutions on top of the Power Platform. So we're in part two of my sort of four parts mini series within a series on plugins and what we're going to be doing today is kicking off uh, from the previous video which I'll put in the chat and we're going to look at how we can deploy out the plugin that we created into our Dataverse environment and we'll show you how you can do that using the plugin registration tool. So before we begin we actually need to download the tool onto our machine so we can um, so we can actually use it. Um, so the easiest way of doing this these days is to go into references, click on manage NuGet packages um, we want to search for Microsoft.CRM SDK and then if we scroll down we should be able to see an option for our plugin registration tool there. Let's give that an install. Accept all the usual licensing terms and gotchas and all that stuff. And then with that installed, if I was to open up my uh, project folder in File Explorer, go up a level and then into the Packages folder we can see we've got a new folder in there for plugin registration tool. Dive in just a few levels further and we've got an executable on here that we can open up. So this will be the typical mechanism through which we get our plugins registered into the Dataverse. Um, uh, it gives us a few different options that we can sort of leverage um, and then from there we can actually um, also set up other components as well which we'll um, potentially come back to in a future video in the series as well. But for now, let me just um, log into my sort of Dataverse environment. Uh, let's just get rid of that error down there. Um, I'm just going to um, not put credentials in, so it will just open up my interactive prompt like so. So let me just log in with my details. Uh, put in the wrong password. Give the old multi-factor uh, a quick approval. Uh, and then I just want to select my dev test environment that I've got on here. Uh, and then when I'm in here, I'll see all the existing plugins that may be set up in my environment. Um, and I could potentially, most of these will be standard ones that Microsoft deploy out to us, hence the sort of naming conventions on them. And then I can just add on a new one by clicking on register at the top and then register new assembly, like so. Uh, I'm going to want to go back up a few folders uh, into the plugin demo folder, back into this and just find my DLL that was compiled uh, a few moments ago. Um, we can leave all these sort of settings as default. Um, these uh, down here uh, are settings which we can't really modify because uh, effectively all of our plugins in Dataverse must run in the sandbox and they must be based in the database. So all we can do at this point is just click on register selected plugins down here and then let's add it into our Dataverse environment uh, all the way down here. And there we can see there's our plugin. So, this, so at this point then it's sat in our data first environment but it won't actually do anything. We need to give it a set of instructions that then tells it okay which table do you want to fire on uh, and which event are you going to be um, sort of triggering on and also more importantly where in the database transaction uh, do we want to sort of fire this off from. So uh, we do this by sort of adding on what we call a step to our plugin. Um, and through here we can define the core details. So for example, I can sort of say, okay, I want this to run on the create of my uh, contact table. Um, I just want to put in the contact like so. Um, I want to make sure that I trigger this as a part of the pre-operation event. Um, so what this is, is before the database transaction is completed. Uh, and what this stage will allow us to do is modify values uh, as they're going through the transaction and override them. So if you recall from our plugin a few moments ago, um, we're trying to override the telephone uh, one field with our formatted number within there. So effectively we can only do this type of type of action when we're triggering our plugin within the pre-operation uh, stage of the pipeline. Uh, everything else I'm going to leave as is. I want to run my uh, plugin synchronous so therefore it occurs uh, whilst the user is saving the record. But then just going to click on register new step like so. And now this is registered on the server, um, uh, regardless of um, which app or which sort of system or integration sort of creates the contact record, this logic will always fire. 
So the easiest thing we can do at this point is just to test our that our plugin works as expected by going into back into our uh, Dataverse environment. I'm going to go into my PL400 demo solution, uh, and what I just will may need to just double check is that we've got a uh, the contact table within our model driven app from before. Let me just check the sitemap. No, okay, so I'm just going to add in the, the contact table so we can obviously go in and um, view that and work with it. So I'll select entity there, change this to contact like so. Uh, everything else looks okay, so I'll just save that, publish it, and then give it a save and close. Uh, everything else should be good, so at this point then let us um, hit play on our application. There's our contacts table like so. And let's just go in and just create a, cont a contact. So I'll just call this contact uh, Fred Jones. Uh, I'm going to put in a phone number. Uh, so if you recall the plugin is going to uh, remove any sort of non numeric characters from our sort of um, from a sort of uh, business phone. So if I was to let's say write the phone number how we may typically do so in the UK. So maybe something a bit like this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, if I now hit the save uh, button, we should observe that the plugin will strip out all of those non numeric characters, and then all we're left with is just the numbers, like so. So, and all of that occurs as part of the save action, it's all something which is seamless from the user's point of view. Um, and ultimately, we can maybe just make sure that we're getting the data that we expect into Dataverse each time. Um, and and you know potentially then also execute any sort of bespoke logic uh, as well off the back of that, which is quite nice. So that wraps it up for this video, where we've been able to sort of see how we can take plugins and deploy them out. Um, we'll be back um, with a another sort of uh, next video where we're going to look at one of the first um, mechanisms that we can use uh, for debugging our plugins, which is using the trace log. So um, for now, I hope you found this video useful um, and I'll see you back here uh, soon uh, as we continue this exercise. Thanks again. Cheers.